hello and welcome to another video um, this video I'm gonna show you how you can add a web API on your MVC3 solution so what you're gonna do is I'm gonna close this guy out what you're gonna do is right click on controllers click add do not click controllers because this is what happens you don't have an option for the web API controller now if you're using MVC4 you have an option in here a template so since we don't have that in MVC3 we're gonna click new item and scroll down to web API controller now give it a name remove that one number there and give it a name here something that you're thinking of doing click add and you're gonna get in my case I name adventure works that's what I named the web API now when you first start you have like this uh, method here delete there's not there's no code in it um, this one it's gonna be just like without this or just be get but I'm just adding get sales orders and the same thing with this one when you first open it will be like just get so you have two functions here one is to get everything and one you're passing an ID so you're trying to pull a specific record from your database now once you finish adding the controller uh, you need to go into your global ASX and you need to add a route like this note says here you need this for the web API to work so you need to add this route this is the default route so to get to it to get to the API you're gonna do API slash and here you're gonna pass in my case is adventure works and the ID is option as you can see here so when we call the API slash adventure works it's gonna go it's gonna call the get and it's gonna return all the source orders so make sure you add this route if you don't add it it's not gonna work so just keep that in mind now what I have here so far is a, just a database I got a folder with DB and I've, I have downloaded the sample database AdventureWorks and I'm using the entity framework you can use whatever you want but the entity is really easy to use so we're gonna be using that so make sure you add your namespace DB well solutions.db and the next thing is to do I'm using this way of initializing the data the entity framework the context so as you can see here initialize a new adventure works container so that's what we're doing here now as you can see here it's really easy to pull orders I'm only pulling I'm gonna pull less than 200 I just do 50 I mean there's hundreds of source orders in the sample database so I'm just gonna return 50 I'm gonna take 50 and return it as a list well okay and that's it and you can start returning data uh, to your clients very easy now I'm gonna run it let's start debugging okay this is the same template we've been using so the route that we added is API slash and as you can see adventure works so this is going back to that controller and it's gonna return well if you scroll down it's gonna be like 50 but you get the point and as you can see one that's the sales order header that's the actual table name 
and it's returning each column on that table so as you can see it's the tags are really nice there's nothing for you to do in this case as you can see this is returning this entity key also so there's some things that you might not want to return to your client maybe you have a column that is only used by by your company so in that case you cannot just return the entire record or the entire table so let me cancel this let's just do three let's see okay what do we got one two three perfect so that's how you can limit the amount of data return so but in case you don't wanna return for example this entity key maybe you have some private information there then you what you need to do is let's stop the debugging what you can do is you can go into your models and create a model here let's pretend let's add a class real quick let's just name it my sales order header header because this does not contain the item information so let's see let's see what kind of columns we have here let's say you want to return the order date so let's start typing that order date let's say you want to return I guess status I don't know what that means but I'll we'll just say string status now if you want to know that type you can just click on this guy and go to your properties you'll see the type is a byte so maybe we don't need that let's see something else let's say total do what's total do it's a decimal let's try that just do that decimal total do so let's pretend you only want to return that to your client so what you can do is we're gonna create a for each and add this guy order and here so let's create a list I'm gonna create a list of my well we need to import order header so let's import our model and we're gonna say my list something okay in here we're gonna add we're gonna say my list dot add and here we can create we can do all of this in here so order date is gonna be sales order that order date and then status equals sales sales order that status uh, I think we need to change that oops total do is total do something happen here byte to string okay so let's not use status let's see what else uh, maybe ship date let's try this one let's try purchase order number where you go I'll just say PO so PO and here is purchase order number that should do it now that we have the list instead of returning that we're just gonna return my list and here we're gonna change this to that Uh huh. Well, 
this the actual right type we return our own type in this case so now let's run it again see if it works slash api got it so you can see you only return it what you want to the client or to your customers just the order day the po and total do now the client can do whatever they want on their side with that data so hopefully this video will give you a good idea how you can add uh, a controller api a web api and this is just a get obviously we can hook up the get sales order and you pass an id and you could easily do it and let me see if i can still do it for you string let's see if we want to just pull yeah we can do that we can do the same thing so i'm just gonna copy this guy down here and now I'm gonna return my own cell sorter, so I'm gonna take that away. And here I'm gonna say db dot sales. Uh, wait a minute, we cannot do that because we wanna return our own data. So here we need to do db order equals db dot sales order. Let's say we wanna take the first one. Just one. Oh, actually, we need to actually return the one the customer is gonna. So in this case, we're gonna say sales order ID equals ID. So the idea is that they pass the ID, and then we pull it and we return it. Now we can return the same thing, but we don't want to return everything. That's the whole idea. So here, what we're gonna do is say, my order equals new, my source order here. And here we just populated db order. Oops, that order day equals db order, that order day, we're done. Then PO equals DB whoop, order that purchase order and my order that total due equals DB order that total due. So once we have our own object, then now we can see return my order. And whoops, sorry about that. So I'm gonna save now we're gonna run it see if it actually works so it was api slash adventure work slash now we pass an id sales order id so let me see what orders id do we have here so adventure works Let's scroll down to sales order header. So let's select an ID. So let's try this one. Where'd it go? Great. So you can see it went to the database. Well, it went to this get. It got the ID, pass it to the entity framework, and it pull it out and populate our object and it's actually pulling this guy so let's say where's the po so the po is last two digit 87 yep that's it 87 the amount is 23150 um, total due total due that's it so you can see how easy it is to start working with your web api and you can make your own objects and return it back to the customer. Obviously, you can customize more stuff to whatever you're doing. And you 
can also add here a way that you can check uh, the client can pass an uh, API key for security reasons. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, send me an email or send me a tweet on Twitter. Thank you for watching.